Hi, first graders. It's Nicole. I'm going to read you guys one of my all-time favorite stories from when I was a kid. It's called Christina Katerina and the Box by Patricia Lee Gauch, illustrated by Doris Byrne. It's about a little girl who's very creative and also very bossy. This is about the book. This is the title page. There's Christina Katerina. She's checking out these boxes. There she is. She's climbing. This is the dedication. It says, for our Christina. There's Christina Katerina with all her stuff. Christina Katerina liked things. Tin cups and old dresses. Worn out ties and empty boxes. Any of those things, but mostly boxes. Hat boxes. Bakery boxes with see-through lids. Shoe boxes. Best of all, she liked big boxes. So she was happy indeed one sleepy summer day when even her sometimes friend Fats Watson was out of town to see a truck deliver a great tall box that came on a refrigerator. I love the way the author says that, that came on a refrigerator. Oh, how grand and new, Christina's mother said, looking at the refrigerator. Oh, it is, it really is, said Christina, looking at the box. And she quickly claimed the box for her own and dragged it under the apple tree to mother, who was very neat and tidy. It seemed that boxes were for basements or trash barrels, not for front yards under the apple tree. But she decided that it couldn't hurt. It couldn't possibly hurt for one day or two to have the big box in the front yard there under the apple tree. There's Christina using her imagination. There's her mother. Look at her face. She's like a little bit worried, but she's like, I don't know. It's going to be okay. That afternoon, Christina's father cut a window and a door in the box. And Christina painted on turrets, a drawbridge, and bolts for the door. And the box became a castle. Inside, she put sticks on the windows for iron bars. And she brought in all her cups and saucers and a lot of Fig Newtons in case there was a battle and she couldn't get out. There she is painting the turrets. There she is pretending with her animals. Uh-oh. For two days, she and her bears lived and played in her castle peacefully. It's a drawbridge. Until Fats Watson came home. He sneaked into her castle while she was out to lunch and ate all her Fig Newtons. And she locked him in until he hollered, I'm sorry, 15 times. Well, who could blame him? Look at that awesome castle. When she finally let him out, Fats gave Christina's castle a kick. And over it went, smack on its side. That wasn't very nice for either of them. He felt left out. She felt like she wanted revenge, which is not a good idea. Look what happened. Oi. Mother came out and saw the fallen box. I see that's the end of the castle, Christina, she said with a smile, and started to haul it away. But that's no castle, said Christina, hauling it back again. That's my clubhouse, which is a new idea. And it was for three long days, right there under the apple tree. Christina changed the window into a door and a door into a window. She put in two benches for members and a chair for the president. And she painted, keep out, members only, and danger to enemies on the outside. There she is. Oh, this is cool. She's got like a trap door. And she let Fats join. They met in the clubhouse, which was very dark when the door was closed and very secret. And they spit on a nickel and swore to be friends forever. And they were wanted danger may be armed oh he's got his lookout gear looks like that might be made out of cardboard even until one day when fats got angry at always being vice president he climbed on the clubhouse roof and promised to sit there until christina made him president oh he looks very upset only the roof caved in first and christina disbanded the club oh poor fats When mother saw the satin box, she brushed her hands together. Now she would have her nice neat yard. Well, she said, that is the end of the clubhouse. And she tugged it toward the street. 
Oh, that's no clubhouse, said Christina, tugging it back again. That's my race car, Hermione, and I'm late for a race. There she is. She's painting new decorations. She put a flag on it. Before speeding off, Christina put a top on the bottom, turned the window into a cockpit, and on the sides painted two magnificent curling silver horns, which she blasted at bats every time she rounded the apple tree. There she is. There's her friend with his flag. For two days, she raced around the yard and won every time. Until Fat said he'd like to take a look at the motor, that it didn't sound quite right. He's got a stethoscope. He looks like a mechanic. When he cut off the nose to get at the motor, the car collapsed. Poor guy. Christina's mother was relieved. Well, that is the end of the racing car, she said, and pulled the cardboard toward the trash barrel. But that's no racing car, said Christina, pulling it back again. That's the floor of my summer mansion, and I'm going to have a ball. And she did, right there under the apple tree. Oh, she flattened it out. Look at all these cool details that she read. She really had an idea of what a mansion had, and she put in all the parts. She padded out the box flat and drew furniture on each flap. A stove and a refrigerator for the kitchen, a bed for the bedroom, and a grand piano and a violin for the living room, so there would be music for her ball. And then she and her bears and fats dressed up in gowns and high heels, and they invited kings and queens and some presidents and one vice president to come. And everybody came, and they danced and danced until their feet hurt, and they had to take off their shoes. Even without shoes, Christina had a wonderful time. until Fats decided the floor needed scrubbing. He sprayed it down with a garden hose and mopped it, until the floor puckered and grew lumpy and finally fell apart. Poor Fats, he keeps trying to pretend and things happen that he can't predict. When Mother came out a little later and looked at her front yard, she shook her head and said, well, and then, is that the end of your grand floor? What floor? asked Christina, who was running by. Oh, you mean that old ragged box? Let's do throw that away. Oh, Christina. Her mother breathed a sigh. <sighs> At last she could have her nice, neat yard. But quick, Christina said. Oh, look, she's showing her mom. <gasps> Fats' mother got a washer and dryer today, and he's bringing two ships down now. I said my mother wouldn't mind a bit if we sailed them here in our front yard, right under our apple tree. They look so satisfied. Good for Fats, he got to bring something. Sometimes I wonder about that name, but then I remember there used to be lots of music musicians with names like Fat Swaller, and it was a little bit different. Um, I'm not sure that's the nickname I would give my friend now. That's my favorite book from when I was young. Christina Katerina and the Box by Patricia Lee Gauch, illustrated by Doris Byrne.